tell us a little bit about what's been going on with Plinge over the last few years and how the industry may have changed in your eyes? Yeah, so uh, the last few years have been a very exciting time for Klinga. It's been a period of uh, rapid growth and development in our uh, offerings for the industry. But in particular, we've been working toward uh, new equipment for pharmaceutical and for uh, dangerous goods shipments, and also in particular for tank container equipment. So we have uh, actually a new system rolling out in the next uh, few months for, uh, for pharmaceuticals, a dual redundant system that can be fit on a standard refriger refrigerated container and uh, will offer that extra peace of mind for the high value cargo that's usually shipped for pharmaceuticals. So if one system fails, the other one will automatically take over and all built into the normal end frame of a container. Uh, we also have other offerings, of course, that we've had for uh, the last five to six years, which have been really heavily used during the COVID period for the pharmaceutical market for minus 70 Celsius, the dual redundant systems as well, with backup power. And then the other large part of our growth, as I mentioned, has really been in the tank container industry for products such as uh, lithium electrolytes and certain acids used in microprocessor uh, etching. So this, these businesses and these growth markets have really been where we've been targeted. Uh, and we've actually ended, the last fiscal year was the best one we've had to date for our company. So we've been quite excited about everything. So uh, Clinge has been in the refrigerated container business for some years now. Um, what do you think gives you the ability to survive, even in tough markets like the pandemic? I think our ability to foresee certain trends, obviously nobody really foresaw the pandemic, but to uh, predict where the market is going and then develop these niche pro products that we have for that marketplace have really allowed us to grow and to uh, also be in the right place at the right time with the right product. So that's been the, kind of the key in our success, especially as I mentioned during the pandemic for some of our minus 70 Celsius systems. These were uh, widely used in the pandemic response and for us it's been a uh, a really large growth market as well. And then, of course, as I mentioned, in the, uh, the tank container side, we're trying to predict how large the tanks will get, what kind of temperature requirements they will have. And we also proactively developed an explosion-proof system, which has been quite, uh, quite popular for certain flammable liquids. So this has been something where we're ready in the marketplace when the demand comes. And so I think that has really been a testament to our engineering team, to our sales folks, and then, of course, to our production team for being able to scale up when we need to on those things. So it's been a concerted and full effort from the entire company. So, um, What would you say your biggest challenges are in the reefer industry currently? I think uh, our biggest challenges in the reefer industry right now are really focused on refrigerants and the uh, new F-gas regulations. And so we've had a lot of conversations with uh, industry, with our partners in the industry, and also even with our um, I would say kind of our competitors or colleagues in the industry as well because the industry kind of needs to move all together in this way. It's not something where one company can make one decision and move that way. Uh, we need to figure out how we will best respond to especially the F-gas regulations in, uh, in Europe uh, and also to do it in a way that's practical, that uh, allows the industry to thrive and doesn't, uh, doesn't put a stop to certain uh, movements of containers around the world which are critical to our infrastructure and critical to our supply of food and other products around the world. And this really is going to be the topic of discussion I think the next uh, five years for sure as uh, companies figure out how to transition to that next level of refrigerant, that next uh, more GWP friendly level of refrigerant. So. What would you say your biggest areas of growth are currently? Uh, as mentioned, uh, for our growth projections in the future and also the last three to four years, most of this has been in the pharmaceutical space and in the tank container space. So we are supplying in, for tank containers, glycol heat exchange systems, which uh, circulate glycol around the, the skin of the tank, basically to cool or heat uh, product as it's being shipped. And uh, this market has really grown in the chemical industry in particular. Uh, there are some applications for juice concentrate and other things as well that we've been working on. But in particular in the chemical industry, as the supply chain around the world grows to support uh, ele electric battery manufacturing uh, and also uh, microprocessor manufacturing, we've seen that really take off the last three to four years. And on the pharmaceutical side, uh, our largest growth has been in uh, minus 70 Celsius systems, as mentioned before, where we're building dual redundant systems there that allow uh, the pharmaceutical companies both to use them in their production in their warehousing, and then finally in the shipment of, of those products. We've also just in general in pharmaceuticals seen a large shift where 10 years ago, most pharmaceuticals were still going by air transport. 
But as pharmaceutical companies looked at their carbon footprints and their responsibility to their shareholders uh, to reduce that, they really started to evaluate ocean shipping as a uh, as a alternative to air shipping. And ocean shipping, in this case, has uh, has a, has a very big advantage in the carbon footprint discussion. So air freight is typically around 30 times more uh, carbon uh, dioxide per kilo per kilometer travel. So in this case, it's a, it's a very, very large reduction in carbon footprint when you go from air to ocean. And that transition has been happening uh, quite rapidly over the past, uh, past 10 years. So for example, companies like AstraZeneca had a plan that they set out uh, about that time, 10 years ago, to move 70% of their volume by ocean, and they've achieved that plan, and they're continuing to do that work to uh, improve their supply chain and reduce their carbon footprint. Uh, Merck has done a similar project, Merck MSD, uh, where they're now roughly 50% of their volume by ocean. So it's been a, a massive transition, and it's been one we've been happy to support in working directly with the companies and also working with their logistics partners to help uh, to help get this new sustainability initiative off the ground for a lot of these pharma companies. So. Have you got any new product announcements? Yeah, as far as new products, we uh, I had mentioned a little bit earlier, but we have a dual system that is being uh, put out for the pharmaceutical market, for uh, in particular focusing on the temperature range of 2 to 8 degrees C, where most of the world's pharma refrigerated cargo moves. Uh, this is intended to allow the pharmaceutical companies to continue this trend of movement from air to, uh, to ocean but with a good feeling about using a more standard reefer body, so less cost, so to say, but also a good feeling about having this redundancy within their system that if one unit has a problem, the other one will automatically take over, and they can really feel that they have this active cooling method that they don't have, usually with air transport as much, but also an active backup as well. Uh, and on other news for new equipment, we're also developing a um, new tank container uh, piece of equipment as well, where uh, we're making it smaller, more compact, and more uh, future-friendly by uh, changing some of the refrigerants that we're using for that application to allow it to be used for longer periods of time. In this case, it will be also able to fit up on, until a 26,000 liter tank, whereas most of the current ones are only fitting on 24,000 liters. So it will allow for more product to be shipped in a uh, more efficient way, and also, again, more future-friendly for global warming potential of the, the refrigerants themselves. And uh, just a final question is, how have you found Intermodal Europe so far, and why do you think this is an important event for the industry? So we, uh, we have been coming to Intermodal for many, many years, uh, and we have always found it to be a center of idea exchange, of connection with our customers, but also finding uh, end customers of some of our customers as well in attendance. And this really allows us to understand what are their needs, what are they looking for in the industry, and as I kind of mentioned in, in uh, the beginning of the discussion, to see and try and kind of predict where we, are, where we will be several years down the road and work toward that product development and work toward that service, uh, level of service that's going to allow us to succeed with those customers in the end. Uh, so this is really for us an information gathering exercise as much as it is an, an, op an opportunity for us to show off what we have of uh, products and other things that we can provide and service to our customers.